Hello, in this video, guys, I'm going to show you how to set up the Death Mumi video game emulator. This is to play Nintendo DS games. I just want to say this video does not condone piracy. It is for educational purposes only. But to do this, it is really, really simple. So first of all, and also this is on the Mac. I've got separate videos covering how to set it up on Windows. So you want to open up your web browser, just Google Death Mumi. And I'll have a link to this in the description anyway. And you want to go ahead and just download the latest version. And if we scroll down and we just want to go to this GitHub page here, this is the latest stable release. So Mac OS. And it will download over here. I already had it, so I'm going to delete the one that I've just downloaded. Double click it. This will pop up. You need to install it. To install it, really simple. Go to Applications, drag this movie from here over here, and that's it. Now we can just double click it or you can search for it here. So double click this movie. And if this ha happens, this movie can't be opened, that's fine. Click OK. Go to the Apple icon in the top left, System Settings. Scroll down to Privacy and Security. Scroll down where it says this movie was blocked. Click open anyway. It'll ask you for your password or touch ID. It'll say open. And this is just a one time thing only. Once you've installed it, you're good to go. And here we go. Here is the emulator. So over here, you can change the speed and you know, rotate it, but you will have you know, a better view anyway. And we'll be able to enlarge you once we actually launch up a game. The other thing is you obviously need ROMs. I've got New Super Mario Brothers right here. It's a .zip file. For legal purposes, obviously, I can't show you where to get the game from, but if you Google it, you can find it. And, you know, in general, if you have any questions about anything, feel free to comment down below. So you need to extract your vault. It most likely will come in a zip file. Extract it. You'll get a .nds file. If you have something like, let's say, a raw file and the built-in utility, you know, extraction utility cannot extract it, just open up App Store. Search for un archive but this is just an optional step if you have a game that's compressed in a way that can't be you know uncompressed using the built-in tool just download the on archiver for free and you'll be able to open it then and now okay before we actually launch up our game i'm going to close this what i recommend is put this in some directory where you you know you have all your games though so i would usually create so i'm going to copy it go to documents roms i'll create a folder here called ds and i'll put my rom over here just just so it's organized before we actually launch the game up we're gonna just configure this so go to settings and most of the settings you can leave as default feel free to have a look if there's anything in particular like r4g database or advanced scene database feel free to have a look at that Input, you'll probably want to change this. This allows you to map your controls. And left is a map for me, so let me just change that. There we go. To map a key, you press on one of the keys that you want to map. So if I click up, now that it's highlighted, if I press P, it will map it right there. If it's been mapped previously, so I think Y was mapped previously to P, it will remove it. So if I map that there, as you can see, P is being removed. To delete something, just click remove. You can have some settings as well. You know, feel free to have a look, but for the most part, I say you just leave that as default. And you know, there's some other settings you can have, you know, the input settings like load and save state. Because you if you have a keyboard, you have a lot of keys that you can use. I'll have a separate video covering how to connect up controllers to Desmini as well. And you can also, let me show you, you have saved profile. So if you click new, you'll get a new profile and you can have a different profile for different users or different games, which is really cool. Go to display in here. You can choose how you want it to look. You want it most likely as dual screen because remember, it is two different screens. The DS was so the display size, uh, you know, that we can just enlarge it. So that's not a problem. So I'll just say leave that as default. For video settings, if we go to like the Langsos Z3, it will, if I forgot to nearest neighbor, 
Um, I'm so sorry. Believe the bilinear, the pixel scale. If I go to none, this is how you'll probably be default because I'd already set up the emulator before. And if I go to a like 6BRZ, it looks a lot better. I would always recommend you check you have it as the lowest setting first then from there you increase it depending on how the game is performing i know this will work well so i keep it as this you can obviously change the settings so you can have a heads-up display you can show you know lag counter video fps again very simple stuff i'll leave that down to you in sound what you want to do for the best method is make sure synchronous is selected and using the n method so make sure you've got something in the audio output engine i found sometimes emulators they'll just have none selected for stuff like this and which is silly but just make sure otherwise you'll be scratching your head thinking why is it not sound in emulation uh, most of this you will want to leave as default except for dynamic recompiler select that this is the just in time uh, recompile you know compiler this will provide better performance and in bosom firmware we can leave this as default in 3d rendering by default this will be selected as gpu scaling factor you'll have a soft ras rasterizer selected as default again i'd already set this up so let me show you what it would look like as default this is what it would look like and again i recommend changing these once you set it up, depending on what Mac you have, depending on the game, you will be able to change this so you can get more performance. And I find the soft rasterizer for the MacBook M1s, you know, is is the good way to go. And we're all set up. Like I said, we'll change these on the fly, and I can sh you can see what the game actually looks like as a result. So if we close this down now, if I launch up a game, go to File, Load ROM, and remember, mine's in Documents. ROMs, DS, and Nintendo DS file right there. Click open. Here we go. I'm gonna maximize that. And if I click the arrow, we got speed, reset, rotate left and right. So you might think this is at two times speed, because it says two times speed. This is very confusing. What that means is this is a button to enable two times speed, not to not that it's on two times. Because if I click that. As you can see, it's a lot faster now, but it says one time speed. So this is not what it is. This is what it's going to become when you press this button, just to bear in mind, although it can be a bit confusing. And if I go to File New, and depending on what key you're pressing, like I'm pressing right here, you will literally show them down here. And you can maximize the screen as well. You can mute the volume, you can mute the microphone, you can do all of that stuff right here. But if I just fast forward a bit, Okay, so now if we go to settings, and you know, we can change the settings to make the game look better. So we can increase the GPU scaling factor. Uh, one second, so we go to emulation settings. So, so right now, uh, yeah, for some reason, my game has already had some previous settings, so there's that to bear in mind. If I go to 3D rendering settings, so this is just for the game right now, let me show you what it would look like by default. So this is what it would be looking like, and if I increase the GPU scaling factor, as you can see, it looks a lot better. You can keep increasing it, but you'll get to a point where one, it doesn't look any better, and two, you'll start lagging. The performance will get worse. And then multi-sampling, I recommend you know increasing that as well. And again, you just want to experiment to see you know what works best. You can increase the texture scaling factor as well. But again, always see what works best and you know how you prefer. You might actually prefer the older, original, more pixelated look as well. Now let me show you what the game looks like and feels like but that's it the game's all set up now so 
So as you can see, we're playing Mario on our Mac from Nintendo DS. It's working really, really well. I mean, there was a bit of lag there, um, but overall, it's working good. Uh, again, you can tone down the graphical settings that I, you know, added just to help out. So let me show you one last thing. There's, there's a few things I can change your display mode and layout all over here. So feel free to have a look at that. But I've shown you most, you know, all the main settings. One last thing, if you go to file, you can save state. So, you know, you might be wondering what is this? And the two main areas that you want to deal with is load save state, load state slot and save state slot. You can import export ROM save files and you can save state files as well so you can export them. But this is what you'll want to deal with mainly. If I click save, now I'm going to close this down. That's the game closed. If I load the most recent ROM, as you can see, it's launching from the start. If I go to file, go to load state slot, slot one, it literally takes me back to where I did that save state. So that means anywhere in the game, even if I haven't hit an official in-game save point, I can still load the game up, which I think is really, really useful. And it means you can save it wherever, whenever. It also means you don't have to go through all of the intro of the game to be able to just get to the menu, then load using the built-in, you know, loading method as well you can have multiple load and save states so that's it that's how you set up the desk mumi emulator for the best performance possible on your mac if you have any questions around you know getting the rom files around setting the emulator up for the best settings around the save states load states around cheats i'm gonna have a separate video covering how to actually set up cheats specifically and where to get them from for your games also how to set up controllers like ps5 ps4 xbox and nintendo switch feel free to let me know in the comments if you liked the video give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and i'll see you in the next one take care bye